The Hockey Sweater by Rock Carrier. The winters of my childhood were long, iron, dirty seasons. We lived in three places, the school, the church, and the skating rink. But our real life was on the skating rink. Real battles were won on the skating rink. Real strength appeared on the skating rink. The real leaders gratuitously showed themselves on the skating rink. School was a sort of punishment. Parents always want to punish their sexy, sexy children. And school is their most natural way of punishing us. As for church, we found there the tranquility of God. There, we forgot school and dreamed about the next hockey game. <laughs> Through our daydreams, it might happen that we would recite a prayer. We would ask God to help us play as well as Maurice Richard. We all wore the same uniform as he, the red, white, and blue uniform of the Montreal Canadiens, the best hockey team in the world. We all combed our hair in the same style as Maurice Richard, and to keep it in place, we used a sort of glue. A great deal of glue! We laced our skates like Maurice Richard. We taped our sticks like Maurice Richard. We cut all his pictures out of the papers. Truly, we knew everything about him. On the ice, when the referee blew his whistle, the two teams would rush at the puck. We were five Maurice Richard taking it from five other Maurice Richard. <laughs> One day, my Montreal Canadian sweater had become too small. Then it got torn and had holes in it. My mother said, if you wear that sweater, people are gonna think we're hookers. <laughs> then she did the thing she do whenever we needed new clothes. She started to leave through the catalog that Hiton Company sent us in the mail every year. Lingering for a long time on the pictures of the men's athletic undergarments and sometimes locking herself in the bathroom for hours at a time. My mother was proud. She didn't want to buy our clothes at the general store. The only thing that were good enough for us were the latest style from the Hiton catalog. To hoard her my hockey sweater, she took out her writing paper and she writes, Cher Monsieur Hitton, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? <laughs> also, would you be so kind as to send a Canadian sweater for my son who is 25 years old and a little too sexy for his age and Dr. Robitaille thinks he's more than usually girty? I am enclosing three dollar and a pair of my most outrageous underwears to remember me by. I hope your package is more impressive than last time. Two weeks later, we received Monsieur Hiton's package. That day, I had one of the greatest disappointments of my life. Instead... Oh, yeah! Instead of the red, white, and blue Montreal Canadiens sweater, Monsieur Hidon had sent us a blue and white sweater with a maple leaf on the front. The shameful, shameful sweater of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I had always worn the red, white, and blue sweater. All my friends wore the red, white, and blue sweater. Never had we even seen the Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. Besides, the pathetically impotent Toronto team was regularly trounced by the rugged, virile Canadian. With tears in my eyes, 
I found the strength to say, I'll never wear that uniform. First, you're going to try it on, you dumb twink. If you refuse to wear outfits that make you feel uncomfortable, you won't get very far in this life. I wept. I'll never wear it. Why not? This sweater fits you and in all the right places. Maurice Richard would never put it on his back. It's not what's on your back that counts, Sherry. It's who, if you know what I mean. You'll never get me to wear a Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. If you don't wear this sweater that fits you in all the right places, I'm gonna have to write Monsieur Heaton and tell him you don't want to wear the Toronto sweater. Monsieur Heaton's an Anglais. He'll be insulted because he likes the maple leaves and if he's insulted, do you think he'll rush to send me my crotchless panties or my pelvic massage manipulator? <laughs> you wear that sweater and ferme la bouche, d'accord? And so I was obliged to wear the maple leaf sweater. When I arrived on the rink, all the Maurice Richard in red, white, and blue came up one by one to take a look. When the referee blew his whistle, I went to take my usual position. The maple leaf sweater weighed on my shoulders like a mountain. An ugly, stupid mountain. The captain came and told me to wait. He'd need me later on defense. By the third period, I still hadn't played. One of the defensemen was hit in the nose with a stick, and it was bleeding. I jumped on the ice. My moment had come. The referee blew his whistle. He gave me a penalty. He claimed that I jumped on the ice when there were already five players. That was too much. It was unfair. It was persecution. It was because of my blue sweater. I decided to throw a sexy fit in protest. My child, just because you are wearing the disgusting sweater of the Toronto Maple Leafs, unlike the other handsomer and more successful boys, does not mean you can act like some spazzed out Anglais out there on the ice. Now you take off your socks. And your jock strap. Yes. All the way. And you go into church and pray to God to forgive you. Wearing the maple leaf sweater, I went to church. Where I prayed to God, I asked him to send as quickly as possible mods that would eat up my Toronto Maple Leaf sweater. <laughs> <laughs>